right, so um, in today's video, we're looking at how you can program your own digital roster for your home um, using a Raspberry Pi, um, a cheap touchscreen panel for the Raspberry Pi, and also a programming language of your choice. Uh, I'm going to use C++ for the entire this video, but if you're familiar with any kind of object-oriented programming, um, it should be very easy for you. Um, this project is especially suitable for people that um, lives in a shared space, like a Studenten Wohngemeinschaft, as they call it here in Germany, which means um, a shared student um, apartment. Yeah, but it's always hard to get a bunch of people to just um, contribute to uh, cleaning the house. So yeah, let's get started. This is the roster me and my housemates are currently using to um, take the trash out. Now this is just one out of many. We also have one for cleaning the kitchen, um, one for cleaning the toilet, for example. But immediately you can tell that it's not the best method of tracking completed tasks. Um, sometimes someone did throw the trash out or someone did clean the kitchen, but they forgot to take this little, uh, this annoying little boxes here, just because there are no pen around sometimes. And every time someone move out or move in, we have to bring out a new roster every now and then. Yeah, you get my point. It's just a mess overall. Um, that sometimes, not sometimes, but most of the time, everyone just stopped using it after a while and um, no one is keeping track of uh, the rosters anymore. So I had this idea for a while. Um, one of my housemates has a Raspberry Pi that he's not using. Um, so in the spirit of coronavirus and also lockdown here in Germany, um, why not take that Raspberry Pi and build something with the time? Um, so my idea is to um, take that Raspberry Pi and use it to um, keep track of all of the rosters that we have currently in this house, like an all-in-one digital roster. Um, and for the roster of um, taking out the trash specifically, my initial plan was to attach a time of flight sensor, like an ultrasonic sensor for example, or a camera so that the camera can automatically tell whether the trash is full or the trash has been recently thrown. Um, and then you can also connect the Raspberry Pi to the internet so it can also send a reminder or notifications using email or something along these lines. But I think that might be too overkill, um, especially for this video. So let's first keep it simple and easy. Let's first um, build the basic functions for our digital roster. And then if you have time, you can always add on more features in the future. For now, here's what we need to build. We need a program that tells you whose turn is it now to do a given task. Uh, for this video, we're going to be using um, the example of throwing the trash. But I think all the different rosters fundamentally works on the same principle. So it will need three buttons. A skip button, an accept button, and a throw button. Now when we add sensors later, we can remove the throw button from the user interface. But for now, the throw button acts like a tick on this paper. Instead of using the pen, you can just press the button. So what we need the program to do now is uh, when someone presses the, the throw button, we want the next person on the list to show up, um, just like how the rotation on this paper works. So one way you can implement this is by having two classes in our program, um, class list and class person. Now this will have an array, probably a dynamic one, so that you can add how many persons you want into the roster. And this array will contain um, objects of person that will have three data members, name, number of skips, and number of accepts. Now name is obviously for the name of the person, but I'll explain what other two data members are for later. Now if you have the two classes set up for the class list, add a function that adds a person or removes a person from the array, um, a function that rotates the array, and also a display function which takes the object on the top of the list and print it out. Now that's done. Um, okay, uh, okay. When, when you press the throw button, the list rotates and the name of the object on the top will be displayed. Yeah, so I hope this is clear to you because this is actually the simple part. So um, here's the tricky part. So what if someone wants to skip his turn, right? Now if someone skips his turn, then that means someone else has to throw out the trash for him or do whatever it is the task for him. So this is usually what we go unencountered for when we use this paper. So for our program, when someone presses skip, he's requesting for someone else to throw the trash for him or do whatever it is the task for him. Now someone else has to accept his request and only when someone accepted his request, meaning throw the trash for him, will the program go back to the normal rotation. 
but at the same time, we'll keep track of uh, the number of skips and the number of accepts a person has. Now, this is why I included the two other data members earlier. So, at the end of the month, by subtracting the number of skips from the number of accepts of a person, we can now tell if someone has a negative number, that means he owes someone a draw. And the opposite is if someone has a positive number, someone owes him a draw. Now, ideally, everyone's number should be zero, meaning um, everyone just follow the normal rotation, so there's no skips, there's no accepts. Or everyone has repaid all the skips they have previously. But at the end of the month, if a person with the negative number cannot repay his skips, he'll have to pay the person with the positive number by other means. Uh, that's for you to decide. But my houseman and I had agreed on um, paying a bigger or smaller percentage of money whenever you buy kitchen supplies or cleaning supplies. Um, now this system is not here to, disc to um, punish someone that had to skip because of legitimate reasons, but it is there to uh, discourage someone from making too much of unnecessary skips. Now if you have one or two skips, you can always pay it back by taking someone else's skip, but not if you decided to not throw it all or to not clean it all for the whole month. Now, if you live with a bunch of students, you'll understand what I'm trying to say here. And since we, are, we had agreed to tie it to money, hopefully money talks. So to implement this in a program, this is how it's going to go. Okay, when someone presses skip, the person on the top of the list, which is currently being displayed, his number of skips will be incremented by one. Now we'll add two more functions to take care of the increments in the class list. Um, that's called the functions skip and accepted, which takes the object of person on top of the array and just increment the number of skips or the number of accepts of that particular object. Um, after that, the program will make a temporary copy of this list. So let's call it main list. So the program will make a copy of main list, but the copy will not include the person that had just skipped, which is the top of main list. Now, the temp list will be displayed to the panel so that we are free to rotate and choose who will be accepting the skip without affecting the main list which is um, the normal rotation, and we don't want the normal rotation to be rotated at the same time. Now, when someone press accept, the person on the top of the temp list, which is currently being displayed, his number of accepts now will be incremented by one. But since we incremented the number in temp list, uh, not in main list, we have to synchronize back the number of accepts to main list. And we can achieve that by comparison, say by comparing the names, for example, and overwrite the number of accepts of a specific person in the main list with the number of accepts of that same person in temp list. Then the panel will again display main list, but now main list should have the up to date number of skips and number of accepts for each person. At the end, the program goes back to the normal rotation until someone presses skip again. So, um, that are the basic functions for our digital roster. Um, I'll be using Qt or Qt, however you want to call it, to, uh, for the program and also for the GUI. And just for the clickbait type, uh, for the clickbait thumbnail, I'm going to design the user interface similar to the game uh, Among Us. You can um, put this in your terminal uh, if you want to install um, Qt on the Raspberry Pi, but I wouldn't recommend that because it's going to take forever to compile your program. So we should try cross-compiling. Now uh, I can't do a better job explaining that, so I'm going to include a link to a good tutorial file online down in the description. So yeah, um, roll the montage. <laughs>
Um, so I guess that's all for today's video guys. Um, please do like and subscribe if you think this video is helpful in any way um, as it helps motivate me to um, post more videos in the future. I'm um, talking about the future, I'll probably add the um, camera or the ultrasonic sensor to the Raspberry Pi. And before I go, I actually have a joke. Um, so hear me out, right? Okay, so um, if you're going to attach the camera to the Raspberry Pi, um, what would the Raspberry Pi actually see when it sees a full trash? A stack overflow. Thank <laughs> you.